So today I'm going to start lecture 30 and here we are going to discuss basic solutions for LP problems and I am Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. So this concept of basic solutions is very important in linear programming. So let's start the process by considering an LP expressed in standard form. A point X is a basic solution if it satisfies the equation AX equals B. Now remember this is the set of simultaneous equations which constitute the constraint set and therefore if any point X satisfies the constraint set that is a basic solution. Now the columns of A corresponding to non-zero components of X are linearly independent and A has full row rank. Therefore we can split X into two sub vectors and we call these two sub vectors as X subscript B and X subscript N and these are the basic variables and the non basic variables respectively. So this is something to remember that all we are doing is that we are splitting the design variable vector X or the basic solutions X into two parts the basic variables and the non basic variables. Now the non basic variables are zero. So one mnemonic to remember this is to consider that non basic is null and both of these have the word N in them or the letter N in them. And therefore this is a good way to remember non basic must be zero or null. Now number of basic variables is M and then there are N minus M non basic variables. So we then write X as this vector X B X N and therefore we can split this matrix A into two sub matrices B and N and the constraint set A X equal to B can be written as B N X B X N is B X B plus N X N equals B. So all we have done is we have written the equation A X equal to B in the form B X B plus N X N equal to B. And this will let us do certain things to calculate XB. So now remember that the non-basic variables are all zero. Therefore, the XN are zero. And in this equation, if I substitute XN is zero, then I get BXB equals B. Now this equation BXB equals B can be easily solved to get the basic variables XB. And matrix B is known as the basis. Columns of B are called the basic columns. Now if you have a typical problem with N design variables and M constraints, the number of basic solutions is at most factorial N by factorial M into factorial N minus M. So this is something to remember. And what will happen is that some of these points which you have obtained will not satisfy xi greater than or equal to zero, which essentially means that some of these points will be negative. And therefore, if these points are negative, these are not basic feasible solutions and we typically discard these points as infeasible solutions. So let us consider an example to cement some of these concepts. So we want to minimize a function f is equal to minus x2 subject to two constraints x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to 16 x1 plus 2x2 is less than or equal to 28 and x1 is greater than or equal to 0 x2 is greater than or equal to 0. So we'll try to solve this problem first graphically and then by using the method of basic solutions. Now if we want to solve a problem graphically the first thing we should do is try to extract the feasible region. So here I have written this constraint set of four uh, inequalities and essentially now our task is to plot these particular functions. So one of the things you should keep in mind is that any such equation such uh, expression 
you can write it in this form so that the right hand side becomes 1 and we'll form the boundary line so we'll put this equal to 1 so x1 plus x2 both of these if we divide by 16 that is equal to 1 that's the first constraint the second constraint would be x1 by 28 plus x2 by 14 equal to 1 so that's this constraint and these are essentially two lines now putting it in this form helps you because you know the intercepts which are there along the x1 and x2 axis so here for example this line will cut the uh, x1 axis at point b which is 16 0 and here also you'll have the point 16 0 similarly here x1 will be at point 28 0 and x2 will be at point 0 14 so these ways you can essentially draw the constraint lines for the problem now the other two variables x1 and x2 should be greater than 0 so essentially these are lines here and here so now you can see that the feasible region becomes a, uh, a b c and d so this particular trapezoid here is the feasible region for this problem and your optimal point is going to be within this feasible region so till now we have only looked at the constraints next we are going to bring in the objective function so then you essentially bring in the objective function into the problem and find out at which point it is a minimum value now let's go back to our constraints and now we are going to try to put it in the form of the basic and non-basic variables so if this is my constraint set i add x3 and x4 as slack variables and essentially these turn these uh, constraints into equality constraints now in the process what has happened is that n has become four that is now i have four design variables and m is two which is of course the number of constraints we had to start with so we immediately know that m is two is the number of basic variables and n minus m is two is the number of non-basic variables so now we clearly know these so we can calculate the number of basic solutions so essentially from our formula here we can calculate that n is 4 m is 2 therefore we get the six basic solutions for this problem here now let us recapitulate this particular problem and we have expressed it in the form where we have slag variables so let us now consider each of the possible cases of basic solution so to do that we take any two variables and set them equal to zero so let's start with x1 x2 i put x1 x2 equal to zero then i plug it into these equations i will uh, immediately get here that x3 will become 16 which is what you see here and here x4 becomes 28 which is what you see here and f is minus x2 which is 0 so f is 0 and so this is the first of the six basic feasible solution now let's take another point which is x1 x3 equal to 0 so if i plug x1 x3 equal to 0 in this one i will immediately get x2 is equal to 16 and then i plug x2 equal to 16 here so this will become 32 so x4 will become minus 4 which is what you see here now immediately you realize that you have obtained a negative value here and this is an infeasible point so we write infeasible here and of course because it is infeasible there is no function value corresponding to this point so similarly you keep going through all the numbers so let's go to the last one which is x3 x4 are both 0 here so if x3 x4 are 0 then i have two equations here x1 plus x2 equals 16 x1 plus 2 x2 equals 28 and if i subtract these two equations i would get x2 would be 28 minus 16 which would be 12 and then i can get x1 which would be 16 minus 12 which would be 4 so here we have this solution now we we go back to f and so f is minus x2 so f would be minus 12 so in this way we have obtained six basic solutions and out of these two of the points are infeasible points so essentially we have four solutions which are 
basic feasible solutions. And you will notice if you go to the graph that these feasible solutions lie at the points A, B, C and D. And therefore by comparing the function values at these points, we can easily see that the best value is minus 14. And so this is essentially the optimal point. Now in the next slide, I'm going to consider some more objective functions and see how things change. So essentially I look at these three objective functions. Now interestingly, this particular part, the x1 to x4 part of this system remains exactly the same. These are not dependent on the objective function. And in each of these cases, I simply have to take these cases and calculate here. So for example, here x1, x2 are both zero. So f1 is zero. So that's this particular case here. And same would happen to f2 and f3. And for the remaining cases, you will have some values. So again, uh, for f1, the minimum point would be at c. For f2, the minimum point would be at b. And for f3, the minimum point would be also at b. So this is an interesting thing which tells you that for the LP problem, your optimal solution is dependent on the constraint set and the function value plays a limited role. Now, one of the things we have seen is that the optimal values always lie at the vortex points, which in this case is A, B, C, and D. And this is one of the important things which comes out in LP programming. Now of the six possible solution, exactly four correspond to the vertices of the polygon, which we saw in the previous figure, and remaining two violate the non-negativity constraints. Therefore, those two particular, those two solutions were discarded. So the one involving the solution number two, where you get x4 is minus four, and solution number five, where you get x3 is minus 12, are essentially discarded. So four of the six basic, basic solutions are feasible and all the basic feasible solutions correspond to vertex points of the feasible region. So I'm repeating this fact because this is extremely important for the LP. So let us write down some of the things we learned from this exercise. We saw that the optimal solution depends on the cost function and is a basic feasible solution the optimal solution is at one of the vertices of the constraint polygon. If the LP has a solution, then it is at one of the vertices of the feasible region. And an exception can occur when the cost function is parallel to a constraint, in which case the feasible solution would lie on a constraint line. So let's put some of these things in terms of theorem. The Collection of feasible solutions for an LP contains a convex set whose vertex points correspond to basic feasible solutions. Let rank A equals M and have the system AX equal to B. If a feasible solution is there, then a, fee then a basic feasible solution also exists. If there is a feasible solution to the LP problem, then there must be at least one vertex point for the convex feasible region. If an LP feasible solution is there, then an optimal basic feasible solution also exists. If the LP has a solution, then it lies on one of the vertices of the convex polyhedron. Now, we saw that for a two-dimensional problem, we got a simple trapezoid. If you extrapolate that to n dimensions, you get a figure which we can call as a polyhedron. And finally, we see that the optimum can be found by systematically locating the feasible solutions and comparing them. So this is what we did for that simple problem with two design variables, which was extended to four design variables by using the slack variables. So essentially what we did there is that we went about methodically setting two of the design variables to zero. So those were non-basic and then we found the basic solutions and we kept doing it till all the feasible solutions of the problem were found. 
Now, this was easy to do for the given problem, but the given problem is also quite trivial to solve using graphical methods. Now consider that you have a very large size problem. Maybe you have 100 design variables or 1000 or 1 million. Then of course this method is going to become very, very cumbersome and you are going to spend an excruciating amount of time trying to solve this particular problem. So it is very easy to see that this approach of finding all the basic feasible solutions becomes inefficient for large size problems and many LPs in the industrial world such as in chemical engineering and so on would be very large size problems also in the field of uh, uh, business management. So there are better methods such as simplex methods which can be used to speed up the process of calculating the optimal point for a linear problem. And besides simplex methods, more advanced methods have come up. But in this particular course, we are going to discuss the simplex method because these will give you enough groundwork to do further research if you are interested more in linear programming and look at some of the mathematical aspects which are required to come up with new methods to solve linear programs. So again, I will stop my video here. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for my next video where we are going to continue with the very important simplex method.